The city of Flint, Michigan is currently in a public health emergency because of unsafe drinking water. In an effort to save money, the city moved from Detroit water to Flint River as their source water, which is very corrosive and was causing high levels of lead, a dangerous neurotoxin, to come off from OLED pipes and plumbing fixtures into their tap water. Already struggling with crime, poverty, and poor nutrition, a hundred thousand unsuspecting residents of Flint were exposed to this dangerous water for 17 months and we now know that many children were in fact lead poisoned. Four-year-old Gavin was one of them. Concerned mothers and citizen groups reached out to us at Virginia Tech and we felt we had to get involved. And so, the Flint Water Study Team a group of young environmental engineering researchers and students led by Professor Mark Edwards was born. Backed by a rapid response grant from the National Science Foundation, we collaborated with Flint residents towards sampling over 270 homes via Citizen Science, where homeowners themselves sampled their water and sent them back for analysis. We undertook sampling trips to Flint to conduct extensive water testing in homes businesses and hospitals for lead and pathogens and performed experiments to scientifically demonstrate how Flint River water was severely damaging Flint's old water infrastructure and increasing lead and harmful microbes in the water. At a later stage, we even worked with elementary school kids in Michigan who did similar experiments demonstrating the reproducibility of this research. We practiced open science and communicated our results and do not drink advisories on flintwaterstudy.org, engaged with the public on social media and even started fundraising for lead filters. Soon after, Flint pediatrician Dr. Mona Hanna Tisha found that blood lead levels in Flint kids had actually doubled after the water switch. This was horrifying. State agencies, however, kept insisting that the water was safe to drink and even try to discredit our research. Despite this, we stood shoulder to shoulder with Flint parents, activists, doctors, journalists, and politicians, raising our voices and pushing science forward for the health and future of Flint families. And then, uh, a miracle happened. The city of Flint should be reconnected to the Detroit system uh, within approximately two weeks. Work on that has already started. A switch back to Detroit is the fastest way to protect public health. This is a heartbreaking story, but it's also one of hope. It demonstrates how environmental engineers can actually make a difference, and why the world needs more of them. I think the most important thing is to not forget your dreams, to not forget the reasons that environmental engineering was appealing to you for all the altruistic reasons including trying to save the world, help people, serve mankind. Don't forget that, because that's ultimately what I think we're judged by. Environmental engineers are stewards of the planet and its people. And we have a moral obligation to serve society and do the right thing. We love chemistry and microbiology and computers and pizza and dancing and Harry Potter. We're just like you. With our work and research, we can help people lead better lives, protect the environment, collectively address major challenges we face as a species, and like Bill Nye the Science Guy likes to remind us, change the world. And isn't that the whole point of living? <laughs>